you working on yourself, to me, is the key. That's the number one, right, is, is you doing the work on yourself. But the really cool thing about you doing the work on yourself, and I'll just own my experience, the way it works for me, I won't say this is for everybody, when I work on myself, my methodologies are, are increased and changed automatically, right? So like when I'm coached, this is why I will always have a coach forever. Not because I need a coach, right? Nobody needs a coach, but it, it's, it's so funny, and this is kind of a tangent, but I just wanna say it real quick. One of the ways I release pressure for myself as a coach, whenever I'm feeling pressure about this, I used to think that coaching was about facilitating a conversation between me and my client, right? And what I finally realized is that my job as a coach is to facil facilitate a conversation between my client and themselves, right? So when I get coached, I am essentially getting to slow down and have a conversation with myself. My coach is holding the space to allow me to have a conversation that I'm too busy to have in my everyday life because I'm running a business and I'm doing all these things. I don't take the time to talk to myself. So when I have that conversation with my coach and I see my own insights, I go, wow, the implications of that insight for me is that now I notice those things when I'm working with my clients, I'm even more well equipped to help them on that journey. So the more I'm coached, the more I focus on my own beliefs, the more I upgrade my own mindset, the more my methodology increases, right? It expands because I see how I've changed and so it opens up my possibilities and how I can serve others. Now it doesn't mean that researching methodologies, especially when you start, because it can be so weird to like, just start coaching. It's great to have some kind of hallmark, some kind of like bedrock that you can say, this is my process, I learned from this school, or I learned, that's fine, that, that's, that's fantastic. But I think just trying to find methodologies without anchoring yourself in it, like if that methodology was how you were coached and it changed your life, then fantastic, like you believe in it. But just to like look up a five step process and say, oh, that's how I'm gonna coach from now on, I don't feel like that's as powerful. So that, that's why I think that the biggest piece is you working on yourself and that I feel like it's kind of just like a, like a, like a tumor. That doesn't sound right. Like some kind of thing that's attached to you working on yourself is your methodology just by default. Then of course the business side. I mean, if you, don't, if you don't focus on the business side, then you have a really cool hobby helping people. And maybe that's what you want, right? Maybe you, you want to work full time in a corporate job and have this really cool hobby of helping people. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But if you want to be a professional coach, Right? if you wanna be paid for your time and how you guide and you help people, then you have to at least be aware of the way the business works, right? And the business can be simple. I think people hear the word business and they immediately think complexity. Like at its core, and, and we've kind of talked about this, at its core, a coaching business looks like you find people, you coach them, they pay you for it, rinse, lather, repeat. Like it's a very simple process. The more you want to expand that out and if you want to leverage what you do and you want to serve audiences or you want to leverage content or those things like that, it may get a little more complex. But the key there that I think I've had a lot of struggle with is thinking that I have to be an expert in all those different pieces as opposed to having a base level understanding to know enough and then find the people who that's their genius zone. Because every time I try to take on somebody else's genius zone, number one, I'm doing a disservice to my goal of serving seven figures of people. But number two, I just leak energy and I leak creativity and then I feel really tired and then it's like, I start questioning, well, what am I, why am I doing this? Like it would be so much less stress just to get a job and have a paycheck and we lose sight of why we're doing things when we get out of our lane. So I think the business thing is really important. You should understand the structure and then get people in place to help you. And that's, I mean, that's the part of my business I'm still playing with is like, you know, as my business continues to grow and grow and grow, I'm having to let go of the control freak that I've always been saying, nobody else can do it like me and say like, nobody else can do it like me, that's good. So let me do the things that nobody else can do like me that actually impact people and let other people who are lit up by doing the stuff that I'm not lit up by support me in the way that I need support. There really is no, at least for coaching, and, and if I really think about this, I could probably find the same, the same truth in every part of this business, but at least for coaching, there is no business part. It's, it's serving people. The business is serving people. The business plan is serving people. The marketing is serving people. The delivery is serving people. The sales is serving people. It's just one thing that you just keep doing over and over. So it's pretty simple.